elbow step, but could not connect on the bucket. St. Clair looking to break through here. There's a bit of a scoring drought, except for the one free throw. Logan fakes, fires away, no good. Doyle comes up with a rebound. Minute 23 to go here in the first. Beckford misses it, but Maddie Weber puts it right back in for two. So it's a two point St. Clair lead with more than a minute to go in the first quarter. Logan with the ball. Selena, one-on-one with Beckford. Lichney with the step off of White and the bucket. Very nice fake by Anna. She let the girl jump by her and just stepped sideways and scored. Under a minute to go here as the Saints hold a 12 to eight lead. Abdallah breaks the timeline. Abdallah sends it right over to White, who gets the ball back. Six on the clock. Doyle goes to work, gets through two defenders, and finds Weber with a nice finish. So Maddie Weber keeping the Condors into this one. And Olichny misses the bucket. Shot clock is dead. Zelina with a steal. She slows things down, and that's travel. It appears that she was intimidated by the presence of Maddie Weber. Not only was she intimidated, Aaron, but uh, her lack of confidence showed there. She should have kept going right to the rim and got fouled. She didn't do it. Kaluta Mod comes in in her place for the final 14 seconds. Weber, can she score again? And she gets fouled by Bazzi. That's going to be her second foul. And that's been one of those issues, that's been one of the issues for Dora Bazzi getting into early foul trouble. Yes, for sure. And um, I believe, she, is she out of the game now, Aaron? Yes, yeah, she is. She I is. Believe. Kaylee Chauvin will take her place with 9.4 seconds to go. Maddie Weber. I'm more concerned about uh, uh, whoever's trying to guard Maddie Weber is not doing a very good job at it. I Absolutely not. Six points for her. Make that seven. Ended up with a double-double last night against Lambton. Shot clock is off. Final seven seconds. Jana over to Chauvin. Back to Jana for the three at the buzzer. And it hits off the rim, and that's the story for the first quarter. We have a tie game at 12 between the Condors and the Saints. Back with more after this. Are you passionate about a particular sport? Would you like to combine it with your education? Are you thinking about a career in one of the many rewarding construction-related trades? Do you love subjects like science, technology, engineering, or math? Take a look at the academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. You'll be glad you did. And years from now, you'll look back on your high school days as the best times of your life. The academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. We're with you all the way. I'm DJ Smith, head coach of the Ottawa Senators. For the best in local sports coverage, we digital. Here, it's about you, your passion, your skills, stepping up to the challenge. It's here where we rise above, soar to our full potential, and where we become work ready. St. Clair College, it's time to take flight. Rise above the ordinary. Back live at the Sportsplex, this is We Digital Productions continuing coverage of OCAA basketball as we're about to start the second quarter. Tied up at 12 for the Conestoga Condors and the St. Clair Saints. Not a lot of scoring in that first quarter, Royal. No, no, and, and 
St. Clair looks a little rusty against this zone. They're not shooting the ball particularly well. And uh, this is a dangerous team to play, Aaron. And we, we're brought to you by Mont's On Time Express. For many vans and 24 straight foot straight trucks, we're committed to make any move big or small, quick and easy for our customers. For bigger loads, accommodations can be made to supply dry vans as well as flatbread trucks. Mont's On Time Express, open 24 hours, 364 days a year. Aaron Sanders alongside Royal Church in the Mont On Time Express broadcast booth as we are underway here in the second quarter. Janet Casera with a nice finish to the basket. And now a that good was look. a very nice set piece, Aaron, as they would say in soccer. They ran a beautiful play there and scored. Beckford breaks through the press. As Doyle couldn't knock the three down. Boy, Matty Weber is tearing up down there, getting offensive rebounds, scoring field goals, making free throws. They got a Put a stop to her, and uh, they triple teamed her there. She could be the X Factor as Doyle beats the shot clock buzzer with a three and gives Conestoga the lead. Fifteen fourteen is the score as Logan tries to drive inside the lane. Yeah, it looks Beckford. to be a foul, but honestly, from our view, it looked uh, like she traveled. It did, um, and I think, uh, I think, was it Jan or Logan, uh, Aaron? Well, Logan was driving right down well, the Well, Logan, Logan thought she traveled herself. She looked at the referee and gave him the ball. She thought she traveled, right? but apparently not. St. Clair gets a lucky break out of this. They'll deal with 14 seconds on the shot clock. Bazzi inbounds it to Logan. Very nice, that was also a set play. So St. Clair gets the lead back. Abdallah going through traffic to Beckford. Misses the shot. Second chance. It goes this time. And the foul. St. Clair giving up uh, a lot of layups off offensive rebounds. And that's what we were afraid of when the game started, Aaron, that this uh, Conestoga team their biggest asset is their height and their strength and their aggressiveness. And, and they're all paying off right now. They're among one of the top rebounders in the league, too. Nearly 50 rebounds a game as Beckford misses the three-point play. That's a lot of rebounds. <laughs> well, when you have that depth, why not? Conestoga with the lead, up one. Just started in the second quarter. Logan with the step on Beckford and the finish. It looks like they found the formula. Uh, get a player one-on-one -on -one and take them right to the rim. Dalla over the waiver. And Doyle finishes it off with two. Way too many layups for Conestoga here. Uh, St. Clair's got to put a stop to this. And the lead changes are rising up here as Jenna misses a three. Bazzi hits the deck. So does Weber. And the Condors bring it up court. Traveling called. So Tompkins will inbound it from the sideline. Over to Elichny. Uh Coach Kiss is not too happy. Are you surprised, Aaron? <laughs> no question. Here's Oden Casera. Fall away. Three, yeah. it goes. Three-pointers haven't been a factor for both of these teams as Casera knocks it out of bounds. That was good aggressive pressure on St. Clair's part. Uh, they have to keep that up. Continue to pressure this team. Doyle with the ball. Tompkins has her as the assignment. Down low, Beckford, and Logan Casera just taps it out, and they get the ball back. Logan has been very effective defensively. And Anna Lichny is off to the line. Now that aggressiveness paid off there, and it paid off on the play before, with St. Clair going after the ball, tipping it out of bounds, pressuring. Um, make You've got to make this Conestoga team, especially the ball handlers, uncomfortable, Aaron. 
Make them uncomfortable. Make them not want to handle the ball because they're afraid to get it taken away. That's the kind of attitude you got to have if you're a St. Clair player right now. It's the defensive presence that's been really intimidating them as of late. Edo Lichny's off the line. This is her second game back after an ACL injury as she knocks down the first free throw. Had a really great outing one night ago. 14 points, five assists, four rebounds, and two steals to her name in 20 minutes, nonetheless. Two free throws for Anna. And that gives her four points for the afternoon, which is how much the Saints are leading by. And White misses the three, and the Saints come up with it. Tompkins with the rebound. Here's Jana, the step back and the J. Now the pressure is starting to have an effect on this Conestoga team. Well, they realize Conestoga has been turning the there ball over. Again. And they do it again. Here comes Jana on the run. Tompkins for three, no good. Abdallah splitting through the defense. It's okay, St. Clair's starting to get what they want here, Aaron. They're in a 1-4 high as Glendinning puts it up and in for two. So Alicia Glendinning on the scoreboard as it's now 25-21. Sarah over to Maude. Jana over to Alichny. Six on the shot clock. Backcourt violation. Kaylee Chauvin set the check in. My observation there, uh, Aaron, is that uh, there was a little too much dribbling and not enough passing. When you pass the ball, the players on defense can't move as fast as the ball moves in the air. But if you dribble it, they can. And Conestoga was able to recognize that as they get the ball half court. Lynn Denning going to work against Chauvin. Defers it over. Gets the ball back. Goes through Chauvin and misses it. And the Saints come out of there. Lichny fakes. Jenna with the step back. That's a long two if it goes, and it doesn't. But Logan Caceres there for the rebound. Jenna driving, gets a step on Glenn Denning, misses the bucket. Chauvin with the rebound. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Logan for three, and it goes. Beautiful shot by Logan Cusera. More pressure. And the pressure not letting up, but White was able to break through. Abdallah, one on one with Ahmad. Under five to go in the half. St. Clair opening up on what could be their biggest lead this afternoon. Glenn Denning's shot hits the right side. And Olichny splitting through the defense. It's her against the world. Ahmad with the jumper. Boy, when Anna has the ball and drives up the floor. There another steal by uh, Jana. Jana with a steal. Goes in and out. The putback no good by Logan. Whistle on the play. It looks like Dee Channer will take another barber's chair timeout. Actually, that was a very strategic timeout by the coach. Uh, the pressure was, pressure was getting to her team a little bit. Take a look at the other replays from today. Logan Casera knocking it down from three-point land. Logan. And that's something they have to, that Conestoga has to be careful at because the Saints were unconscious from three-point land last night. Yes, and here's Coach Andy Kiss uh, directing his team, talking to them about how they have to be intense on, an, on defense and rebound, rebound, rebound. You can't say that term enough and uh, because it's going to make or break his team here today. They may not have the depth, but you take a look at hard-working players defensively, like Kaluta Maud, today Freckleton, and Nora Bazzi. They make up for that lack of depth with their hustle. And that's one of the main reasons why they're in third place in the OCAA thus far. Yes, that's for sure. And um, uh, 
Coach Carter and I were talking before the game and we both agreed. Um, it doesn't matter how big the other team is. It doesn't matter how many rebounds they get. Speed kills. And if you've got fast, speedy players who move their feet and get down the floor quickly, you definitely have an advantage. So that's the name of the game for basketball in today's time. As the timeout is done, St. Clair with our largest lead of the afternoon, 30 to 21 with 4.30 to go here in the first half. Tanae Freckleton is uh, back in the game along with Kalu Damad, so we're talking uh, their speediest lineup. A steal, there's a steal by Freckleton. Freckleton she has daylight. She and missed misses. it, but Logan followed up and scored. What a great play by Tanae Freckleton. And Logan was right behind her the whole time. Absolutely. Ramel Abdallah gets the ball back. Very slow scoring to begin with, but the Saints were able to open up with a nice scoring run here in the second. And the Conestoga Condors turn it over again. Here's Jenna going for the reverse, gets fouled by Glenn Denning. And Jamila Beckford comes back into the game. So Jenna Casera goes off to the line and coming into this weekend was in the top 10 in OCAA scoring. Six in assists as well. And knocks down the first free throw. I it believe you mentioned yesterday, Aaron, also that uh, Logan is somewhere in the fourth spot in scoring. Logan in fourth, Jana in ninth. So it's good to have the Casera twins among the elite in OCAA scoring Absolutely. as they knock down the free throws. Oh, pressure, steal. Ahmad with the steal, misses the bucket. Freckleton with the rebound, Logan. Inside the free throw line, no good. Doyle with the ball, breaks through Freckleton's defense. Beckford with the save, but it's Freckleton with the steal. Here comes the Saints. Logan for three, yes. So Logan Casera with great ball movement was able to knock it down. Beckford over the Doyle. And a steal by Ahmad. She got running room and draws the foul. Boy, the pressure here in the last couple of minutes, Aaron, has been just stifling. St. Clair with a pretty strong second quarter. After a very low scoring affair in the first 10 minutes, Ahmad goes to the line, headed up with six points last night. It was perfect from the field goal range too. Three for three for her. And as they get more accustomed to the system, you can see the confidence lie with the exception of that free throw. And Amada is one of those players we keep on seeing her confidence grow each and every game. Absolutely. Outside of the missed free throw, Conestoga gets the ball back with three minutes to go in the second quarter. St. Clair 37, Conestoga 21. It'll stay with Conestoga. And we would like to welcome our viewers in who are enjoying this Saturday afternoon basketball doubleheader here on We Digital Productions. What a fake from Weber and the beauty. What a beautiful finish from Weber. She's been playing extremely well this first half, Aaron. Maddie Weber ending up with six points for the afternoon so far. Here's Freckleton, she has a crack at it, but she misses it. Chauvin comes up with the board. Jana with a crossover over to her sister, Jana. Uh, Logan rather for three, no good. Freckleton with a putback, doesn't work out for her. The rebound by Abdallah. Down the floor is Doyle. 
Abdallah, spin move, jump hook, no good. Here's Jenna, loses control of the ball, hands it over to Logan. Two minutes to go here in the half. What a step from Freckleton and the finish. It was the spin move that got her enough space to get the leaner to go. Ahmad with the steal. Chauvin comes up with it. And there's Ahmad. Back to Jana, through Abdallah. It'll be an offensive foul. So this lead continues to expand for St. Clair to the chagrin of the Condors. As Megan Zelina and Nora Bazzi checks back in for the Saints and for the Condors, Alicia Glendon and comes back in. It's been a, la a frenetic last five minutes, Aaron. Just up and down, up and down. It's been all St. Clair since the quarter began. Beckford finishes it off for two. Lichney will check back in on the next whistle. Come on over to Logan. Logan has running room and scores. A little weave out front there, give and go, three players, look very nice. That gives St. Clair a 16 point lead as they approach halftime. Glendening on the basket, gets fouled by Megan Zelina. No bonus yet, Aaron. Fouling hasn't been the issue in this game thus far, and we have seen, we, we have seen a majority of that in these women's games this season. Not a lot of foul trouble situations. But at this point, both of these clubs have no more fouls to give at this point. White almost lost control of the ball. Beckford gets at the top side. Eight on the shot clock. Doyle, that will count as a long two. So it's 41 to 27 with 34 seconds left in the half. Ahmad driving. Lichney to Logan. The give and go. Finger rolls no good, however. Shot clock is off for the final 17 seconds. Abdallah over to Beckford, and she loses control of it, gets the ball right back. Final seconds, White for three, no good. Final two seconds, Alichny and Logan will heave it away, and it's no good. That will be it for the half. St. Clair with a big second quarter, and they will take a 41-27 lead in the halftime. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Like our champions, we know what it takes to win. Every day we put on our uniforms and we strive to be the best. Ring after ring, we keep practicing until it becomes second nature. Our craftsmen have put in thousands of hours to master their trade. And when things get tough, we make the adjustments needed to stay on top. Baron Championship Rings. This is who we are. No matter the reason, our passion to learn brought us here.
Welcome back. This is the Halftime Report here on Weed Digital Productions. At the half, it's St. Clair Saints 41 of the Conestogas 27. I'm joined by Doug Schenk, the assistant coach of the Conestoga Condors. And talk to us what you saw in the first 20 minutes, Coach. Well, the, the first quarter was our best quarter that we played so far this weekend. Uh, we came out with a bit more intensity. But then we just uh, make some metal errors, leaving their shooters open. We talked about switching on every uh, screen. And uh, we, we kind of got li lazy on that. And then they had some threes. And then it's just hustle plays. We've got to be a little more hustle. Absolutely. And I know you guys played against the Lambton Lions last night in yeah. that loss. Um, how much does fatigue play a factor in, in games like these? Yeah, we have a couple of banged up players, and they're important to our team. So our, our, our bench is uh, hurting. So we're going to about seven in the rotation. So it, it's tough, difficult to come back from that quick turnaround from last night. You know, this is a, one of the best starts that the Condors have seen in the three years in its existence in the OCAA. And it was three years ago where you guys were playing exhibition games here, and now you're among the elite right. of the OCAA. I mean, how gratifying is it to see this program going into a type of direction like this? Oh, it, personally, it's gratifying. I'm an ex-Condor from the uh, early 80s, so it's uh, good to see basketball back. And obviously, as our program gets more developed, we're going to be able to recruit local talent instead of them coming to, you know, going to Fanshawe or Mohawk, and, and that way we'd be able to recruit local. Absolutely. Uh, second half, another 20 minutes to go. Um, how are you guys be able to get involved as far as scoring is concerned? Because I know that was one of the key factors in the second quarter. Yeah, we've got to make better decisions. We're a little slow making those decisions. When our players are open and not attacking, we seem to be waiting and by that time, uh, St. Clair has their defense set, and it makes it more difficult. All right, good stuff, Coach. Thank right. you for your time. No Doug Shank, the assistant coach of the Conestoga Condors, will take a quick timeout, and we'll be back with more after this. Are you passionate about a particular sport? Would you like to combine it with your education? Are you thinking about a career in one of the many rewarding construction-related trades? Do you love subjects like science, technology, engineering, or math? Take a look at the academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. You'll be glad you did. And years from now, you'll look back on your high school days as the best times of your life. The academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. We're with you all the way. I'm DJ Smith, head coach of the Ottawa Senators. For the best in local sports coverage, we digital. Here, it's about you, your passion, your skills, stepping up to the challenge. It's here where we rise above, soar to our full potential, and where we become work ready. St. Clair College, it's time to take flight. Rise above the ordinary. Like our champions, we know what it takes to win. Every day we put on our uniforms and we strive to be the best. Ring after ring, we keep practicing until it becomes second nature. Our craftsmen have put in thousands of hours to master their trade. And when things get tough, we make the adjustments needed to stay on top. Baron Championship Rings. This is who we are. Back live here at the Sportsplex, Phil Milanis, the assistant coach of the St. Clair Saints, joined me. and. Phil, it was a very rough first quarter as far as scoring is concerned, but you guys were able to open up in the second quarter. What was the difference? Well, I think they're having a problem with our press there. So they played last night in Lambton, had to stay overnight over a hotel, so their feet are kind of not moving too good. So we took advantage of the press. You know, it worked out to your advantage too, considering you guys have back-to-back -back home games as well. Um, one of the key factors coming into this weekend is Anna Lichny being able to come back after an injury she sustained. I mean, talk about the positives of her coming back into the roster. Uh, huge, you know what I mean? And it's it was a big surprise to us 
after watching her on video of in practice and sending that video to Kim and getting it like I'm amazed to tell you the truth she's playing as well. It doesn't even look like she's got an ACL tear or anything, right? She's just playing like normal. Okay. And she's in it in her head, no problem. What's but going the to trans be for her, mm -hmm. she does what most kids on our team don't. She takes the ball and goes, right? Mm -hmm. Transition pass. Absolutely. Talk about the keys for the second half. Well, we're going to still press them. Hopefully we get the they're, – they're sagging on defense, so hopefully our shots go in from outside and go from there. All right, Phil. Thank you for your time. Right, thank you. 14-point lead for the Saints at the half. We'll come back with more in just a moment. I want this to be perfect. I want to be inspired. I want to be challenged. No matter the reason, our passion to learn brought us here. Are you passionate about a particular sport? Would you like to combine it with your education? Are you thinking about a career in one of the many rewarding construction-related trades? Do you love subjects like science, technology, engineering, or math? Take a look at the academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. You'll be glad you did. And years from now, you'll look back on your high school days as the best times of your life. The academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. We're with you all the way. I'm DJ Smith, head coach of the Ottawa Senators. For the best in local sports coverage, we digital. Here, it's about you, your passion your skills, stepping up to the challenge. It's here where we rise above, soar to our full potential, and where we become work ready. St. Clair College, it's time to take flight. Rise above the ordinary. Welcome back. Royal Church now joins me as we break down some more stats of the first half. And one of the positives for the Conestoga Condors have been Maddie Weaver. Boy, you cannot stop her down to the post, eh, Royal? I believe she has eight points, Aaron. But it's not just the eight points. She's, uh, she's a big body. She's aggressive. She's asserting herself on the St. Clair Saints. And they're having tremendous difficulty controlling her. And uh, I think what what Andy made an adjustment near the end of the first half there where he double and triple teamed her when she got the ball. And then she was ineffective, of course. And just about that time, St. Clair was starting to run and pressure the ball and, and started scoring at will. That's right, we're gonna take a look at some of the highlights of the first half, especially it was all St. Clair in the second quarter. Compare that to the first quarter where both of the clubs were tied up at 12. St. Clair was able to open up a 6-0 scoring run, and there was no turning back at that point. St. Clair outscoring Conestoga 29-15 at the end of the second quarter. More highlights from well, right here, there. Here you see, you just saw um, Logan Kusera and Bazzi score on three-pointers. Um, there's uh, another Kusera jump shot that, that uh, goes in. They got on a roll there where they started making a few shots, 
and it got contagious, Aaron, and they all started to make shots. And you know, the good news, that's the good news, but the bad news is they're allowing Conestoga to shoot 43% of the field. The reason why that's the bad news is St. Clair was only able to shoot 35% from the field, and the majority of those buckets have been from down low, like you said before. Yes, and, and St. Clair, um, the advantage they had though, Aaron, was they got so many more shots than Conestoga because Conestoga was turning the ball over so much, they weren't getting shots. St. Clair was getting the shots after uh, causing the turnovers. Let's quickly talk about the keys for the second half. What's going to be the key? Well, I think, um, Conestoga has to reestablish their uh, a slower pace because when St. Clair presses and they put pressure on like that, they steal a ball from you and there's nothing you can do. Uh, it's kind of frustrating for you. And the players looked frustrated because every time the ball was in the air, there was a St. Clair player after it, either tipping it, intercepting it, or causing confusion in the Conestoga offense. Mm -hmm. So. Conestoga has to cut down the turnovers by running a good press break where they don't turn the ball over. Maybe slow the game down a bit so St. Clair can't run all over the place, steal the ball and score. 20 more minutes of action, stick with us. We'll have the second half after this. Are you passionate about a particular sport? Would you like to combine it with your education? Are you thinking about a career in one of the many rewarding construction-related trades? Do you love subjects like science, technology, engineering, or math? Take a look at the academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. You'll be glad you did. And years from now, you'll look back on your high school days as the best times of your life. The academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. We're with you all the way. Welcome back to the St. Clair College Sportsplex. Just about to start the second half here as the Saints take a 14-point lead in. We're taking a look at the stats before we start the third quarter, Royal. And like I said, it's good for the Condors that they're going down low, but it's becoming a factor for the St. Clair Saints. Yeah, these statistics don't really tell the story of the first half, Aaron, because uh, St. Clair really dominated that second quarter completely, mm -hmm. took Conestoga completely out of the game. And although the field goal percentage uh, favors Conestoga, I would say there's a lot more to that than just the statistics that you see there. Um, not much, not a lot of big difference in the turnovers. That's turnovers are 19-7, which is probably the number one factor in why St. Clair's up 14 points right now. The big factor is both of these clubs are rebounding 21. Stick around after this game. We have men's action at 3 p.m. as the Conestoga Condors and St. Clair Saints will do battle. This is St. Clair's final homestand before the holiday break, and they want to end it on a positive note. Both of these clubs remain undefeated at home. We should mention that as well. Aaron Sanders alongside Royal Church here in the Mont's On Time Express broadcast booth. We're glad that you're here for Saturday afternoon basketball here at the Sportsplex as we wrap things up here for the 2019 portion of the OCAA seasons. And I'm sure that the young fans are really enjoying this game as well. There's one right there, Aaron. A lot of experience to be gained, whether if you're on the court or watching this game, wherever you may be. Second half is underway, Conestoga with the ball. Ramla Abdallah, she had a lot of touches in the first half. Will she be able to convert those into buckets? Traveling called, it will be St. Clair ball. It looked, it looked like St. Clair was in a bit of a zone there for the first play. And it worked out in their favor as the Saints get the ball. Here's Tompkins. Over to Janet Cassero. Ball's away and it's short. Tompkins is there for the rebound. Final seconds on the shot clock. And that'll be a 24 second violation. That is seldom seen from the St. Clair Saints. 
Um, Aaron, we just saw that Conestoga went to man-to-man -man defense, which is going to be tough for them. I would suggest to you that St. Clair should start driving to the basket now. Mm. Well, it worked out for them, not only in the second quarter, but it also helped them out as far as the fast break was concerned. Dollar with the ball. And it gets denied by Tompkins. And here comes Logan to Sarah. Tries to feed it to Wilichny, but couldn't control it. So these teams have reversed defenses. St. Clair has now gone to his own, and Conestoga has gone to man-to-man. -man. They have to find some way to cut down the turnovers, though. 19 to 7 in the first half. One minute into the third. Weaver loses control, regains composure, whistle on the play. It will be on Jana Cassera as she picks up foul number three. Kaylee Chauvin will come in in her place. She's been getting a lot of time on the court today, Kaylee Chauvin. Yes, yeah, she has. Uh, Jamila Beckford hasn't done much yet, uh, Aaron. I don't believe she scored very much. And uh, St. Clair's doing a good job on her. Remember, this is a player that's among one of the top scorers with 22 points per game. She's been limited to six at the moment as Weber puts it in for two. So it's now 41-29. St. Clair with the lead and the ball. Logan. On the corner, Bazzi misses the three. Chauvin, second chance, gives it to Bazzi. She misses it. There's Taylor White again. Beckford sizing up. Defers it over the Glendinning. Abdallah, eight on the shot clock. White driving over Bazzi and Tompkins, but misses the left-handed layup. Tompkins misses the jumper as Beckford comes out of there with a rebound. Good poke from Logan Cassera, but it will stay with Condors. Nice recovery there by Logan, tipping the ball away uh, from the Condor player. And uh, it's Conestoga's ball out of bounds. And she did that for the majority of the first half, too, denying any entry passes. As Chauvin slaps the ball away, it will stay with Conestoga. The coach, D. Channer, asking somebody to get open and take care of the ball. Balls in to Weaver. Logan Cassera gets knocked down, but Weaver puts it in for two. And the Condors are back into this game, down 10. Bazzi gets the step off of Weaver. Ulichny saves it, and it goes over to Logan for three. No good. Bit of a slow start here by the uh, St. Clair Saints in the second half. Unfortunately, that was the story in the first quarter as well. Beckford, one-on-one -on -one with Logan Cassera and gets it in. And that's how you get involved. The Condors are on a 4-0 scoring run. And it's an offensive foul. Another opportunity for the Condors to cut this lead down. Kaluta Mod checks back in for St. Clair, taking Nora Bazzi's place. And at this point, the Saints have to put the clamps down defensively. Here's Abdallah going one on one against Ulichny. It's taken away. Tompkins, long two, in and out. Logan Cassero with the chance. Draws the foul, and she's off to the line. Jamila Beckford with the foul. That will be her third. Aaron, I think uh, St. Clair's success 
is so closely tied with their pressure defense when they go that 2-2-1 two -two full court zone press that they really need to do that. Uh, they're playing kind of fall back man to man right now. They don't have that typical aggressiveness of the St. Clair girls team. And it's hurt them a little bit here in the beginning of the second half. Mm -hmm. Logan knocks down both free throws. Meanwhile, Taylor Doyle comes back in for the Condors. But if you take the second quarter out of the equation, Royal, we would be talking about a very close game right now. Absolutely. Abdallah tries to send it to White, but that goes out of bounds. Pressure equals turnover. And remember, the Condors had 19 of those turnovers when the first half was over. Belichny. Chris Tompkins, three from the wing, no good. And here's Abdallah. She only had two points in the first half as they send it over to Weaver. Glenn Denning with a shot at it, no good. It'll stay, it will go to St. Clair with 6.01 remaining in the third. Again, this is the last home stand for St. Clair before the holiday break. They want to remain undefeated on their home court before the first semester ends. Nice feed inside of Logan Casera, who draws the foul. Kirsten Tompkins with a great pass to Logan, who just got fouled and is going to the line for two shots. But that kind of passing will, uh, will result in your team being very successful. Logan Casera ended up with 17 points in the first half. She adds on to it. She has 19 of the game. Now 20, 45 to 33 is the score with 5.45 to go. The offensive foul nicely done by Logan Kachera. Pressure turnover, right Aaron? Mm -hmm. It's uh, it just, it's who they are. It's who St. Clair is. And uh, they're very good at it. Cross court pass to Ahmad who gives it up to Lichney. Lichney with the step on Adala, crosses over. Gets the ball back from Tompkins. Here's Tompkins. And the rebound by Ahmad, it's no good. And Taylor Doyle comes out of there with the board. Abdallah finds Weber, easy two. That was too easy for Maddie Weber as she has 14 for the afternoon. Chauvin hands it off to Logan, gets the step from the free throw line, good. And the full court press continues for St. Clair. Weber finds Abdallah, misses the two. Whistle on the play. It will be on Kaylee Chauvin. In the meantime, Nor Bazzi and today Freckleton returns for St. Clair. Ramla Abdallah off to the line. Like I said, had a lot of touches in the first half, but haven't been able to convert those into points as she misses the first free throw. Only two points for her. In yeah, the first um, half. I was going to say that with Kalu Damad and Tanay Freckleton in the game, you're looking at some heavy duty pressure here. So I expect St. Clair to come right after him. And Adala misses both free throws. We'll see if that pressure holds on. There's Freckleton over the local to Sarah from downtown, and it's no good. Doyle with the rebound. Doyle beating Bazzi off the dribble. And they find Weber. Once again, Maddie Weber just becoming a force to be reckoned with. Uh, I'm not sure how Kalu Damad got stuck with Maddie Weber 
At about an eight inch disadvantage. It's a big mismatch. Freckleton from the corner, yes. And they find the gap and they expand this lead to 12. Dalla feeds it to Glenn Denning, going one-on-one -on -one with Kachera, misses it off with the right hand. Kachera finds Ahmad, and it goes. What a pretty play, Aaron. A simple back cut, and gets the two. Bazzi almost came up with a steal. Abdallah all alone got Chauvin and Weber with her and scores with Weber. Again, those mismatches popping up for St. Clair. As is now 51 to 39. As he over to Logan. Gets rejected by Weber. Here comes the Condors. Doyle driving right from the baseline, puts it up, and it's no good. Second chance doesn't work for her. Ahmad comes out with it, and Abdallah comes with a steal. Weber off to the top side. Abdallah motioning Weber over Freckleton. Nope. But you gotta admire the Condors for getting those second and third chances. It just wouldn't be able to fall for them. Freckleton tight roping the baseline. Now the 10. Bazzi. The Saints will keep possession as Jamila Beckford comes in for the Condors. And Olichny and Kirsten Topkin comes in for the Saints. Seven seconds on the shot clock as St. Clair will inbound it. Maddie Weber having the game of her life here. Huh? Ending up with 20 points at the moment. Freckleton on the top. Down the four. Logan, double pumps. Doesn't work. Freckleton with the save, but gives it up to Beckford. Two minutes. Doyle, guarded by Freckleton, heavily guarded by Freckleton. Breaks through, fakes the three, gives it inside the Beckford. Seven on the clock. Beckford fakes her way to the basket. It's no good. And Kirsten Tompkins comes up with her third foul of the afternoon. So Kalu Namad will check right back in as Beckford is off to the line. Mila Beckford at the free throw line, coming into this week, only shooting 51% from the free throw line as she misses the first one. I did see that, Aaron, that uh, she's only shooting 51%. Their team is uh, in the mid-50s, so they're not very good free throw shooters. In total, 58% as a team. And she's been with the Condors since they entered into the OCAA in 2017-2018. 51 to 40 is the score. St. Clair with the lead. Bazzi feeds it over to Logan. She'll go one on one with Ramla Abdallah. Ahmad misses it over Beckford. Doyle comes up with it. It's Beckford. She has Kaluta Ahmad behind her. What hustle from Freckleton. Dalla gets it back inside the Beckford. That's going to be a foul on the floor. That will be a foul on Kaluta Maud, as that will put the Saints over the limit. We'll send Conestoga to the line. As Beckford goes back to the line. Looking at Conestoga's season so far, 
They had a very impressive winning streak to start the year, winning four of their last five. But they have only won one game since then. Lost to Fanshawe in their home opener, won against Niagara, and then traveled on the road and won two games against the Sioux and Redeemer. Lost to Sheridan, won against Mohawk, and lost to Lampton last night. 60 seconds left in the third. Here's a Lichney back into the game. Steps back and misses the shot. And Conestoga comes up with a rebound. Conestoga outscoring St. Clair 15 to 10 here in this quarter. Glenn Denny with a mismatch over a mod, flips it up, no good. It will stay with the Condors with 27 seconds left. So Conestoga's opening up on the scoring and still in this game. St. Clair's had a little bit of a a bad run here. I think they have to get their act together and get more, very much more aggressive. Mm -hmm. White tries to control the inbounds pass, but couldn't. And St. Clair will have the ball. That only took off about one, two seconds off the clock with that sequence. One second differential from the shot clock and game clock. Logan finds a mod over Ulichny. Corner three, yes. Big shot on a Ulichny to that, make it a 12 point lead. And that breaks the dry scoring spell and ends the third quarter as the St. Clair Saints lead the Conestoga Condors 54 to 42. We'll come back with the fourth quarter right after this message and a word from Wheat Digital Productions. Hi, I'm DJ Smith, head coach of the Ottawa Centers. For the best in local sports coverage, Wheat Digital. about you, your passion, your skills, stepping up to the challenge. It's here where we rise above, soar to our full potential, and where we become work ready. St. Clair College, it's time to take flight. Rise above the ordinary. Like our champions, we know what it takes to win. Every day we put on our uniforms and we strive to be the best. Ring after ring, we keep practicing until it becomes second nature. Our craftsmen have put in thousands of hours to master their trade. And when things get tough, we make the adjustments needed to stay on top. Baron Championship Rings. This is who we are. Aaron Sanders with Royal Church here at the Mons on Time Express Broadcast booth. Welcome back for OCAA Basketball. St. Clair has a 12-point lead over the Conestoga Condors. As we are just about to start the fourth quarter, but not before we have one last look at the final play of the third. Ani Ulichny with that long three to finish off the uh, third quarter. And a very important basket because it put the Saints up 12 points. Ulichny has seven for the afternoon. And that puts St. Clair up with the lead. And remember, this was a quarter where St. Clair was a little bit quiet on scoring until the end of the quarter. But nonetheless, they got outscored 15 to 13 by the Conestoga Condors. And one of the main reasons is they can't find answers defensively for Maddie Weaver, who has over 20 points. Yeah, she's, uh, she's played the game of her life today. And uh, here we go. Let's see how this fourth quarter goes. Ten more minutes of basketball here for ladies action. Don't forget, game two of our doubleheader comes up around 3 p.m. with the men's action. Sarah sizing up, spins around into the basket. No good, but she'll go to the free throw line. 
Very nice spin move by Logan uh, to get to the line for two. And Loka Casera is having another great game herself. 23 points, only six points in the third quarter. But nonetheless, leading scoring for both teams. And the more we see players perform like this, the more you see the elite in the OCAA. You're seeing one of the top scorers go toe to toe here today. But it's quite interesting considering that Jamila Beckford has been silent for not only tonight, but the entire weekend. We have an injury on the floor. It's going to be Ramla Adala. Ramla, I believe, got injured on that uh, drive by Logan Kusera at the other end. She got knocked in the. Uh somewhere in the facial area mm -hmm. and uh, she was a little concerned but uh, we didn't we didn't think it was this bad Ramla Adala on the floor she's been she's been basically the general for the condors She doesn't look well, Aaron. It looks like it's something to do with her, her head. Mm. Officials doing a good job today, Aaron. They're calling the game very well. They're not overcalling it. They're letting them kids play. Uh, there's contact, but you don't always have to call contact, right? Ramla Dahl is able to come right back up. She'll head to the bench. And once again, St. Clair Saints basketball is brought to you by Mons on Time Express. From minivans to 20 foot, 24 foot straight trucks, we're committed to make any move big or small, quick and easy for our customers. For bigger loads, accommodations can be made to supply dry vans as well as flatbread trucks. They're open 24 hours, 364 days a year. So after the injury timeout, the Conestoga Condors retain possession. Weaver pokes through the ball, but it's a turnover. And it gets turned over as well. Here comes White over to Doyle. Beckford with running room and puts it in. Tough layup from Jamila Beckford. She has 13 today. Ended up with eight last night. As Jana Casera misses the three. Tompkins comes up with the board. She has the three for herself, and it goes. What a play. The rebound by Kirsten Tompkins, and she turns it into a three-pointer. And that gives St. Clair a 14-point lead. Ahmad 101 with White. Met by the double team. Bodies hit the floor, and that prompts a foul. Great pressure by uh, St. Clair there. Uh, even though they committed a foul, that was a good-looking play by St. Clair. Mm -hmm. And Tompkins picks up her fourth foul, which means Nor Bazzi will check in for her. There's Doyle over the white. They find Beckford near the free throw line. Doyle gets the pick from Beckford. Final seconds on the shot clock. Beckford beats it but misses the shot. And Connick Stoga gets another break. Tough bounce. Uh, Logan had the rebound wrapped up and then bounced off her knee out of bounds. Connick Stoga has to find some way to get back into this game. They're down 14 with 8.20 remaining in regulation. Here's Glenn Denning, misses it from the side. Ball gets poked around, and Olichny comes up with it. Casera gets denied by Beckford as she takes it in herself. She got Logan Casera and Kaluta Mod with her. Instead, gives it back to Doyle. Weaver with a fake. Couldn't finish. Again, those mismatches really coming to form in Conestoga's favor. 
Lichty tried to get the backdoor pass, but could not control it. We have 741 left now. St. Clair looking a little better here, and they're running some stuff off their offense, showing a little discipline. Bazzi tried to drive near the baseline, but gets denied by Doyle. Defers it up to Jana, but misses it. Amon with the save. Bazzi over to Amon. Amon crossover, dribble, puts it up, no good. White over to Glenn Denning. Feeds it immediately to Weaver. Beckford inside, Glenn Denning for two. So it's not much of Weber here in the fourth quarter. It's been the good touches for Glendinning as they'll have another, another chance at it. St. Clair turns it over. Freckleton and Chauvin returns for the green and gold, however. Well, Chauvin should be able to give him a little inside strength against this very, very good Conestoga team. They've been very good. Doyle takes the shot at the three. No good. Glenn Denning comes up with a rebound and scores. So Glenn Denning with four straight points. And now the deficit has been cut to 10. Chauvin almost got poked away. There's Jenna on the drive. The teardrop is short. His traveling violation. It appeared that Maddie Weber poked one of her teammates by accident. That's why she hesitated in the backcourt. Yeah, she she whacked uh, Jamila Backford in the face with the ball. A barber's chair timeout for the St. Clair Saints. Want to remind you that game. Game two or a doubleheader coming out, but in the meantime, we're brought to you by the Barber's Chair. For over two decades, the Barber's Chair team consists of experienced professional barbers ready to provide you with that perfect cut you've been looking for. Walk-ins are always welcome, and you can go online to thebarberschairwindsor.com to book your appointment today. Game two of our doubleheader will start around 3 o'clock. It will be the Condors and the Saints. Again, the Saints trying to remain undefeated at home to wrap up their 2019 portion of the OCAA season. Stay with us here on Weasel Productions for the game. A great win for the uh, St. Clair men last night against Redeemer, Aaron, a very close game. One point with a few seconds left and uh, St. Clair men managed to pull it out in a very exciting contest. They won that 85 to 81 to keep their undefeated streak at home alive. Despite losing two tough games in the GTA region a weekend ago, they were able to bounce back. And now they look to win two in a row. Back to this game, Bazzi with a long two. But they'll count that as a three, however. It is now 61 to 48. Swings it over to Beckford at the top side. Inside the Glenn Denning. Offensive okay. foul. So Janica Serra right down near the semicircle. And the Saints get the ball back. Saints DJ. looking to stretch this lead out to past 13 points. And um, finally put a, 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 a clamp on this uh, tough Conestoga team. There were many lead changes in the first half, and Glenn Denning appears to go down. And it appears like she will need a substitution or a couple of seconds. Instead, we'll get a substitution in Carter Vestrati. Aaron, I believe the Conestoga players are um, just giving out 
from a tough game last night. A lot of them had 35 minutes, and they played tough today, but boy, oh boy, it's been a, a long, difficult time for them. Fatigue is a major factor. Coming off a loss against Lampton on the road last night, and now they find themselves down 13 against St. Clair. Bazille over to Jana. Today, Freckleton through the crack of the defense, but can't get it to fall. Will be Conestoga's possession. Here comes the 2 2 1 zone press again, Aaron. They went away from it for a while, now they're back in it. Bazzi, Freckleton up front, Chauvin and Cassera back. Beckford over to Vestrady. Doyle tried to find Beckford, but it was over her reach. It'll be Saints ball. So St. Clair, five minutes and change away from going up eight and two to wrap up their 2019 portion of the season. Sarah misses a three from the side. And Alicia Glendinning will check right back in after a breather. Carter Vistrady comes out. Boy, she's hurting Aaron. I'm not so sure as a coach if I would have put her back in again. She looks visibly in, uh, in pain. It's situations like these. We talked about the death of the Condors, but could be too little too late as we approach the five minute mark. Maddie Weber finishes it off for two. That's 22 points for Weber, as it's now 61 to 50. Kirsten Tompkins and Anna Olichny set the check back in for the Saints. Freckleton from the corner. Doesn't fall. That'll be a foul on Megan White. Only her first foul of the game. So substitutions are made. Four. <laughs> Inbounds pass goes into Alichny. Alichny over the Bazzi. Bazzi catch and shoot. And it hits off the top. Whistle off the ball. Kaylee Chauvin picks up foul number three. At this point, looking at the stats and seeing everything as the travel is called, you have to give the game ball to Logan Cacero. Yeah, she has 24 points and has had a great game, Aaron. Made all her free throws, done a nice job defensively. That's what you have to expect each and every night. She's doing a tremendous job. Chauvin from the corner doesn't work. Weber comes up with it. Here's Doyle. So he's things down at the top. One on one with Bazzi. Beckford with a nice spin move, but could not hit iron. St. Clair holding on to an 11 point lead at the moment. As he on the drive, feeds it to Elichny. Here's Jenna for three. And Conestoga will get the ball back. Logan Sarah will check back in after a Barber's Chair timeout. 
from the Conestoga Condors. Not much more you could say. It's been a dominating second half for the St. Clair Saints. But you have to go back to the second quarter where just things opened up for the green and gold. And at that point, yeah, you couldn't because, contain uh, them. After a first quarter tie, Aaron, they really did, as you mentioned, open it up in the second quarter. And I believe won the second quarter by 14 points. 29 uh, to 15, to be exact. So, so that really established St. Clair as the dominant team in this game. Now, Conestoga has kept it pretty close within 10, 11, 12 points, and uh, St. Clair hasn't been able to pull away. Um, so St. Clair would be well advised just to run some good offense, show some discipline and patience, and force uh, Conestoga to have to foul. If they're able to contain themselves for the next three minutes and 11 seconds, they'll find themselves with an eight and two record, still among the top three in the Western Division. Of course, with Humber and Fanshawe right ahead of them. But it would be a nice way to end their first half of the regular season. Surely would, Aaron. And um, they would be uh, full value for that eight and two record, for sure. Been one of the finer starts for the Lady Saints in recent time. But their loss is only coming to Fanshawe and Humber. As that ball gets taken away, here comes the Saints in motion. There's a Lichney, feeds it to Logan. He feeds it right over to Megan White. And they feed it right on over to Weber and the foul. No basket on the play. As Maddie Weber is set to go to the free throw line, trying to go for a 23rd and 24th point. Uh, Kirsten Tompkins fouls out. Kaluta Mod will take her place. No shots here, Aaron. They're going to give the ball to Conestoga on the sideline. They appear to be on the floor. That is correct. But there might be another opportunity to get those points. And there it is now. Lichney pokes it out. It'll be St. Clair ball. Nice job. They, they double teamed uh, Weber in the post and didn't let her get a layup. Mm -hmm. 225 left. Logan on the drive, flips it oh. up and in. Again, her ability to maintain her balance and control her shot is so polished as Weber gets 24 points for the afternoon. So it's now a 63-52 St. Clair lead. Logan all by herself for two and they'll count it and the foul. Wow, that's 28 for Logan, and she's going to the line. Looks like she may have a shot at 30 points today. That's uh, an outstanding performance. And you can tell by the smile on her face right there in that picture that she's having a good day. You have to enjoy it. Honestly, there were a number of games where we've seen 20, 30-point outings from Logan Casera. 29. For Logan Casera, as it's now 66-52. The ball's taken away. Zelina will go all the way herself, gets denied by Weber. So it looks like the Condors will take a timeout on the next dead ball. 90 seconds. Lindenning works with the double team and gets fouled. That foul will be on. Jana Cassera, that'll be her fourth for the day. Flynn Didding knocks down the first free throw. So Alicia Glenn Denning 
who ended up with 14 points last night, ends up with eight. So St. Clair brings it up court. The Condors have one more game before their break, and that will be next weekend where they will play at Humber to face the Hawks. Selena driving, but she traveled. Today Freckleton will check it in. And the Condors will take a timeout, a barber's chair timeout. And it appears that this game could be elementary at this point with a 66-54 lead. And if it stands, the Condors will drop two in a row and fall to five and four. And the Saints will move up to eight and two. A fine finish to the uh, first part of the season and the break coming up. Uh, St. Clair at eight and two, full value for that record. And uh, uh, certainly uh, last Sunday, Coach Andy Kiss said that his team outplayed Humber. They just didn't get any breaks and didn't shoot the ball well at all. But in all other categories, they, uh, they beat up the Humber Hawks, except on the scoreboard. So things look good for St. Clair. They're in a good position, and um, they can now rest a little bit and look forward to the new year. And these fans are sensing victory for the green and gold as they are 64 seconds away from ending 2019, eight and two. But I'm impressed with this Conestoga Condor team, Aaron. They're solid, they're intelligent, they're disciplined, they're huge and they play very, very well. They're extremely well coached. How far can they go with a full roster? That is the question. As Freckleton comes up with a steal. Freckleton finds Jana. It will stay with St. Clair with 51 seconds remaining. Logan over the Bazzi, catch and shoot. No good as Glenn Denning comes up with the board. White over the Beckford. Beckford hands it back to White. She'll take three and it knocks it down. So 66-57, nine point St. Clair lead. Six second differential, shot clock, game clock. Logan over to Freckleton from the corner. And the Condors will use their final timeout. This is a barber's chair timeout. So at this point, if you're D. Channer's squad, what do you do? Well, you can't do much. Uh, there's only a few seconds left, Aaron, and that uh, little baseline jumper by Freckleton there just now uh, has put St. Clair up 11 points. So, you know, all you can do is really play it out as hard as you can play and like they have the whole game. And um, it's going to be a result that St. Clair is going to be pretty pleased with, I think. But for the Condors, one positive, Maddie Weaver, 24 points for the afternoon for her. They were able to use the depth to their advantage. Again, the key problem was that second quarter. If you yeah. take that out of the equation, a whole nother story. Yes, that, that second quarter, you're right, Aaron, was the, uh, the, the telltale story of this game, basically. If you have a bad quarter, it's hard, like a bad quarter down, losing by 14. That's a bad situation. It's hard to come back from that. So 11 seconds remaining. Here's White, and it's taken away by Freckleton. That will do it. Beckford with another steal. She'll hold on to it. That's it. 
as St. Clair holds on to a 68-57 win. They'll end 2019 with an 8-2 record. We'll wrap it up with the post-game report in just a few moments. Stay where you are. Are you passionate about a particular sport? Would you like to combine it with your education? Are you thinking about a career in one of the many rewarding construction-related trades? Do you love subjects like science, technology, engineering, or math? Take a look at the academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. You'll be glad you did. And years from now, you'll look back on your high school days as the best times of your life. The academies of the Windsor-Essex Catholic District School Board. We're with you all the way. I'm DJ Smith, head coach of the Ottawa Senators. For the best in local sports coverage, we digital. Welcome back. The final score, the St. Clair Saints 68 and the Conestoga Condors 57. Player of the game this time, no question about it, Logan Casera. And Logan, it was a very slow first quarter, but you guys were able to pick it up in the second quarter. How were you guys able to open up the scoring? Uh, we just uh, went into that second quarter and we tried to use our fast-paced game to push them. We know that they had a lot of players that played a lot of minutes in their last night's game, so we wanted to use our speed. And how were you guys able to take advantage of the depth that Conestoga have. I mean, you guys you guys are a smaller roster than them, but how were you able to take that over? Uh, we just fought in the paint, boxed out, and we grabbed those rebounds whenever we could and pushed it back up the floor. Finished off 2019 with an 8-2 record. How does that feel? Feels amazing, yeah. Going into the second semester, confident, and knowing that we can finish top three. All the best to you, and we'll see you after the break. Logan, Thank congratulations. You. Logan Casero is your player of the game as the final score is the Saints 68 and the Condors 57. Game two of our doubleheader coming up around 3 o'clock is men's action between the Condors and the St. Clair Saints. But for now, this be Aaron Sanders. You're watching We Digital Productions. We'll see you at 3 p.m. <laughs> 